people know people here. When everybody was here, everybody would be outside walking around, walking their dogs, you know, just enjoying. You don't see that in the suburbs. It was like a small little community hidden in the city. Right? It's not easy to go there, huh? So you unclip this with a screwdriver. Okay. It used to be beautiful in here. We used to have yard inspections, and you know, you'd have to make sure that your yard was better than the lady down the street. I want to talk about low-income housing. You know, Calgary doesn't have much of that. Apparently, a lot of people in Calgary make a lot of money. Some of us don't. I've been here 38 years. I'm 92 years old. Then I get an eviction notice. We were given no choice. had a couple of seeds in an envelope, and I didn't know what it was, so I planted it. It took a while to come up, but it's a nice plant. You know, I'm in my 80s, and I don't plan on getting rich. And my, like my daughter said to me one time, she jokes with me all the time, my youngest daughter. She says, Dad, give me some of your money. I said, why? She said, you can't take it with you. I said, then I'm not going. They want this land. Some people are estimating it's worth 90 million. Some are saying 60 million. This is my home. I spent $25,000 last year uh, putting a new roof and upgrading the whole thing, new siding. I'm supposed to just walk away with it, you know? I mean, it, it, it doesn't make sense. If you play nice, they'll walk all over you, you know? The only thing that's going to save us is the press and the media and, uh, you know, you have to embarrass them. The future of Midfield Park has been up in the air since the early 2000s when concerns surfaced over failing water and sewer lines. And you cannot fix the sewer pipes without removing the house because of the way the original developer built that land. The land is city owned and civic officials would prefer the valuable property to be used for high density mixed use developments. Look at this, goes back to 2006. Rudy Prediger leads a community co-op and as he watches his property value drop, Prediger says there's only one deal he will accept. To get out of here and leave us alone. They're telling everybody in the city that the infrastructure's falling apart. That's a big lie. I try to tell our people here, if your home means anything to you, you have to fight for it. If you're not willing to fight for it, your home, you don't deserve it. moving. We found a place. The kids are leaving a lot of friends behind. Go from there. Start back at the drawing board and yeah. Are you okay?
You're moving right yeah. away? Yeah. Where are you going? I bought a place out in Red Deer. Red Deer? Yeah. Okay. This last paperwork shows right on it that if you're not out by the end of September, they're gonna take, forcefully take you out of your homes, change your locks, and you're done. And you don't get no money. I don't know what they're gonna do, but there is they some people. Sheriffs, they're all gonna be demolished. Yeah, and what about you, Gary? I'm getting, I'm demolishing too. Oh yeah? I have no choice. When? Too old, oh, I can go. I can go till the end of September. They're supposed to build us a new park. That's how it started. Well, we're going to build you a new park out by uh, Citadel out there. Oh, they showed me pictures, a little lake in the middle and all this, and a little fountain shooting up. And all of a sudden, no, not building you a new park. Out. And, uh, that's it. So out we go. This tree here, I planted that one, it was about a foot and a half high. And there was no bike path here, so I wasn't worried about it getting wrecked. And the city one day is gonna come in here and hit my tree with a bulldozer. Well, and I look at the golf course, I say you got three, 400 people living in this park, and you got six people on the golf course covering about 5,000 acres. And they have no place for us. Ridiculous. I'm not telling them to remove uh, uh, the golf course. I'm telling them to remove themselves from our way of life. If they don't like it, don't treat us like trailer trash. Well, the thing is, they promised us a, a, a new park to move to. And, and we're going to hold them to that, you know? If I make a promise to the city, they damn well hope make me live up to it. Yeah, and you got the manager going knocking door to door. You got to get out by the end of the month. They're scaring people. When I was a kid, moving from apartment to apartment and losing your stuff, it's not a big deal. But when you're in a home and you've accumulated so much stuff and you have stuff from your family that that's, uh, they've passed on and you can't take with you now, it's hard. True wealth is what you are, not what you have. It's not what people believe anymore. There's quite a few people in here that think that they're just going to be able to walk up to a lawyer and uh, fight and stay in here. And Rudy's filling everybody's heads full of, oh, we're going to save this part. We're going to save this part. He's not saving shit. It's, it's going to be taken, period. You're going to lose your home. There is no more fight. There is no more time. This place used to be mint. I used to keep it. My grass was cut, the fence was up. But after what they did, give up. Just don't do nothing. Is that my apartment? <laughs> Found one that I will take, and uh, so I'm ready to go. I can move at any time now, pretty much. It's a bunker. It's a basement apartment. It's a one bedroom. Yeah. I'm going from two feet above ground to four feet below, because right now I'm two feet above ground with the skirting, right? And I'm going to go into the bunker. I'm going to be down. All you can see is my head. But I'll get used to it, you know, you know. You just move with the, with the flow. 
I have to take what the majority does. I mean, I can't, uh, not one man is going to take on the city. I've been watching the interviews that you've been doing, mm -hmm. and I don't, I'm still trying to figure out what I can do to help other than just shine the light All on right. it. All right. Like, what are you hoping for, for you? Compensation at fair value? Like no, value? then I got to go buy something. I want my home. You want to keep it? Yeah, certainly. People ask me why you haven't started a lawsuit, why you don't have a class action. Money. To close midfield, we, under the Mobile Home Tenancies Act, had to give one year's notice. We said that wasn't fair. We gave three. No compensation was payable. We said that wasn't fair. So everyone's getting $10,000 cash, plus help with their moving expenses. Plus, of course, they still own their homes. So of the 183 homes at Midfield, I believe about 150 have moved already. About 40 uh, have plans to move before the end of the month. About 10 we have not heard from yet. They can't fence us off and not leave an exit. Yeah, you know, fire I know they got to put a, a, a fence around every zoo they got, but you got to still be able to let the odd animal out. Yeah, it kind of gives you that closed-in feeling for sure. Takes away the scenery view. we got. You know, we pay an extra fifty dollars in rent here to look at the scenery, and they fence it off. A year ago, I, was, I started to have pains and everything. Then I finally went and got checked out. And after a month or so of diagnosis and stuff, uh, I found out I had stomach cancer. So I went back to work and said, well, I can't work now because I've got other issues to deal with. And left work and came home here and I walked into the front door. And that's when our notice was on the front door saying that we have to leave here at the end of September. So then I just kind of threw that aside because I had other issues to work on right now because I was in a lot of pain and everything. So we got through that. Now we got to get through this. Dean Braun just came out of the courtroom um, where they are arguing the case on Mayfield. He's the person who put up the GoFundMe page for those of you who wanted to help fund the action. And I'm going to find out what exactly happened there. Dean Braun, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for calling in. It's been an, a, a great morning. So tell us what happened. Well, we went into the court and the, uh, our, the, the lawyer who, who we engaged, Matt Farrell, he's argued with the city that we're going to delay it 
until November 22nd. So the residents who want to remain there are free to remain there until November 22nd. Oh, right on. So no eviction on September 30th. No eviction September 30th. They know they got a fight on their hands because uh, before I take $10,000, I uh, I'll put a match to it. That's a joke. It's going to stir up a hornet's nest, and that's exactly what it's going to do. If you've got the public behind you, that's... then everything changes. Yeah. Residents now have a lawyer working on their behalf. Matthew Farrell took the Park residence case to court today. At a hearing booked in November, Farrell will argue the city's reasons for evicting the residents crumbling water and sewer infrastructure goes against the province's Mobile Home Sites Tenancy Act. We're here to go in front of the judge and find out which way things are going to go. And how are you feeling about your chances? I always feel good about it, otherwise I wouldn't be here. <laughs>
I don't want to be in some home. You know, if I'm going to die, I'll do it at home. Brady, are you good to go have a walk? Hello. Hi, are you good to go have a walk? Yeah. I'll join you. Just let me finish up here. Look at this. Yeah, lay down now. When I was gone in the hospital, when I come home, I went and lay down on the bed and she laid down beside me and something woke me up and I looked here, she's right here licking my nose. <laughs> Laying on the bed and licking my nose, she was so glad that I'd come back. <laughs> Hello. So are you going to fill me in on everything that happened down at the courthouse? I uh, just heard on the radio here that the judge ordered everybody out by next February. That's all I know. Yeah, uh, just the news you needed to hear today, huh? I was uh, planning on retiring here and spending the rest of my years here. But anytime you have anything to do with this city, you know, they'll dig your grave up if they want that land. It's cost me in my life for being outspoken. But if I think somebody's being treated wrong, I speak up. It's just the way I am. It's like uh, one guy told me one time, I like a good licking once in a while. I said, why? He said, it feels so good when they quit. Mm -hmm. 